Good morning, third period. How was your weekend? Did you have anything fun or exciting happen over the weekend? Hopefully you enjoyed it. Remember, I told you last week that I was going to be gone today. Remember, I am in Chicago because my husband uh, ran the Chicago Marathon. So today, um, you should have already watched um, video notes, um, being able to explain uh, some of the columns that we're going to be adding today. Remember, you guys are slightly behind my other classes because um, you guys missed class on Tuesday last week to do delivering rosary practice. So we're going to try and uh, knock some of this out and get um, a little bit caught up. Okay? So today what we're going to be doing is that uh, you are going to be adding four columns to your production schedule. So the four columns are associated with uh, the notes that you already took. So they're all going to be about costs. So the first column is going to be fixed costs. Okay, so fixed costs. Remember in the notes we talked about fixed costs are costs that are incurred even if the output is zero. So even if you made absolutely nothing, okay, uh, what, uh, what costs would you have to pay for? Now, you guys kind of missed out on doing the airplane activity, but I used the numbers, remember, from seventh period, uh, and what I told you was that uh, the cost associated with it is, is that they had to pay for rent for their group, they had to pay for paper, and they had to pay for labor. So before they made anything, they had to pay me rent, and labor or uh, rent and paper costs. So the rent was ten dollars uh, and paper cost two dollars. So our fixed cost totally was twelve dollars. Okay, so twelve dollars in this instance. Now remember they had to pay that before they actually made anything. So at zero workers you can fill in twelve dollars. Okay, because you had to pay it even before they made anything. Okay. At one worker, okay, they didn't have to pay anything more just because they hired one more worker, so they still had to pay $12. And at two workers, again, $12. Notice it's fixed. It stays the same. That's what fixed means. So you could actually go and fill in $12 going all the way down. So I'm actually going to just go copy and paste all the way down. All right. Next column is going to be variable costs. Shocking, right? So variable cost um, is going to be uh, looking at what changes in the short run. So remember from last week, it's the only thing that can change in the short run. Labor. So this is us paying for our workers. So at the very bottom where we added on our, original, um, our original equations from last week, um, you can also add this equation. I'm actually going to make it a lot bigger so you guys can see. Variable cost is going to be equal to wage times the number of workers. Wage times the number of workers. And if you remember, okay, I um, told you last week that the wage that I charged them was $2 in this instance. Okay, In this instance, it was $2. So we're taking $2 times however many workers we have. So two dollars times zero one two three four so you can go in and fill in at variable cost of zero workers two times zero is zero two times one is two you get the picture two times two is four okay so take a minute to go through and actually fill in all the way down so I'll fill in as I'm talking to you um, the amount of cost to hire this many workers okay so we're filling in just multiplying by two every time. And at the end, you should end with $20. Okay, so that's your variable costs. Now, next column is going to be total costs. So total costs, as it sounds, is going to be adding your fixed costs and your variable costs. So again, equation at the bottom. I'm going to put it over here. So total cost is going to be equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. Total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. So we're just adding across. So at zero workers, our fixed cost is 12. Remember, because we had to pay that rent and paper before we made anything. Plus zero will give us a total cost of 12. At one worker, 12 plus 2 will give us 14. 
At two workers, 12 plus 4 will give us 16. At three workers, 12 plus 6 will give us 18. Keep going. Fill in the breast. You should be able to follow this pretty easily. We should end with 32, $32. Okay, now, la, the fourth column for today is going to be called marginal costs. So, marginal cost is going to be how much extra it costs to produce one more airplane. How much more is it going to cost me to produce one more airplane? So here's what we're going to do as on the bottom for the equations, okay? So our equations, um, we're going to do, oh, I got to fix my, all right. Uh, so to, we're going to say that marginal, co um, marginal cost at one worker, marginal cost at one worker is equal to total cost at one worker minus total cost at zero workers. And notice I have this underlined because we are going to then go and have this underneath. Okay, we got to divide by marginal product at one worker. So the total cost at one worker is marginal cost at one worker is total cost at one worker minus total cost at zero workers divided by marginal product at one worker. Now the reason we have to divide by marginal product is because if I'm scrolling back up here, okay, if I'm going to do this and I'm going to do 14 minus 12, which is 2, okay, that's going to tell me how much it costs me to produce two more airplanes. I want to know how much it costs me to produce one more airplane. So I have to take that divided by the marginal product. So when we're doing this, marginal cost at zero workers, you can't do. Just like when we did marginal product at zero workers. You couldn't do that one either, okay? So here we go, okay? So what we're doing is total costs at one worker, we're taking 14 minus 12, okay, which is two, divided by two. So two divided by two, yes, is one, okay? At two workers, now we're finding the difference between 16 minus 14, which is two, divided by three is going to be uh, 0.67. Okay. Remember, we have to put it in decimal form because this is money. Uh, at three workers, we're subtracting 18 minus 16, which is 2, divided by 5, which is going to give us 40 cents. At four workers, we're going to be subtracting 20 minus 18, which is 2, divided by 6, which will give us 33 cents. At five workers, we're going to subtract 22 minus 20, which is 2, divided by 7, which will give us uh, 29 cents. Okay, keep going. See if you can fill in the rest of these. Okay, I'm gonna have the sub pause the video and then uh, we will, uh, once uh, it's unpaused, the numbers will magically appear. You should have filled in the marginal cost column. So we last left off, I believe, with I think seven workers. So we had 29 cents for seven workers. Eight workers is 33 cents. Nine workers is 40 cents. 10 workers is 67 cents. Now, 11 workers, okay, remember our 11th worker was our imaginary worker. You can't do marginal cost at 11 workers. The reason being is you divide by a negative marginal product. And if you think about it, that means that it'd be a negative cost. I don't even know what that means, okay? You can't do it, okay? So just put in a line. Remember, a line is different than a zero. Okay, now, if some of you were paying attention, you started to realize what happened to the numerator in all of these cases, okay? The numerator in this case was always ending up to be two. Why was it two? Ah, if you were paying attention, it was two because look above. Okay, that was the wage. That was how much our variable cost increased by. Since our fixed costs stay the same, when we add fixed and variable, our total cost only increases by two as well. So as a result, you can actually go and you could put a line through this, okay? And you could go and put instead wage divided by marginal product, okay? So wage, which is two, divided by our marginal product column, okay? 
This is the end of those four columns. Uh, next, you will be looking at the last three columns having to do with revenue.